Item number SCP-5147 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures All inactive SCP-5147 instances are to be separately contained in showcases of double-pane glass. Inactive instances are permitted clothing, but work equipment or utensils on the person are prohibited. All confiscated tools are to be stored in designated storage units. The entrance to the containment chamber with inactive instances is to be guarded by three guards at all times. Personnel with level 2 clearance or higher are permitted access to these instances. Active instances of SCP-5147 do not intend to breach containment. Instances may roam the premises of Site-63 freely after being equipped with an electronic angle band with a GPS tracker. A guard may be assigned to an active instance at the discretion of Dr. Roy Hevodo. Any task or request given to SCP-5147's instances may not interfere with the Foundation, security risks, and other anomalies who are not classified as safe. Any violation without explicit permission from senior staff result in being permanently blacklisted from SCP-5147. Containment of injured or broken instances needs to be observed by security cameras. If there has not been a visual recovery for 72 hours, the footage is considered outdated and subsequently deleted. Newly broken or recovered instances must be reported immediately. Injuring instances deliberately will also result in being blacklisted and possible termination. Description SCP-5147 is a collective designation for 41 sentient hollow faceless mannequins numbered SCP-5147-1 to 41. Each instance excels at a particular skill set, ranging from one particular skill to multiple, as long as they are closely related. Instances refer to each other with names associated with their respective skill sets. For example, the cook and refer to the collective as the mannequin troop. Instances are capable of receiving spoken and written requests. Upon acceptance, the individual instance will attempt to complete or provide aid in someone's request in a harmless manner. Requests that are morally unjust or are impossible to fulfill cannot be accepted. Requests are most likely to be denied if the person seeking aid has harmed any instances in the past. Upon completion of a request, instances will return to their respective showcases and remain frozen in place resembling standard non-anomalous mannequins. Instances are capable of regenerating after approximately 72 hours regardless of the severity of their injury. Instances do not like requests where they can get hurt easily and will ask for precautionary measures before Assuming their original task. Discovery SCP-5147 was initially discovered on the 24th of June, 2013, from a storage room of an abandoned theater in Kosovo, Poland, where they are used as stage props and fitting dolls. The anomalous properties were discovered during the soft strip of the theater when a demolition crew employee made a comment interpreted as a request. Quote, Maybe they can let us a hand with this stuff. We'll be done in no time. Following this, several instances became active and began to assist the soft strip of the building. One employee attempted to contact authorities twice. This led to Foundation agents being dispatched. Class B amnestics were administered to all involved witnesses following the removal of SCP-5147. The theater was subsequently demolished to make place for a new residential area. Instances did not resist during initial recovery. SCP-5147 was temporarily located to the nearest site before permanently being moved to Humanoid Containment Site 63 in France. Interview after discovery. Audio interview log. As of 27th of June, 2013. Interviewed. SCP-5147-32, the vocalist. Interviewer. Dr. Roy Hivodrill. Forward. The interview took place three days after the initial discovery. 
SCP-5147 had yet to be transferred to the humanoid containment site 63. Begin log. Good afternoon, SCP-5147-32. I'm Dr. Heverdo. You can simply call me Doctor. Now, we've brought you here because we have some questions for you. Given that you can speak, we believe that you have the most experience in communication and wish for your cooperation. Do you understand me? Yes, Doctor, I do. But if you need me to write something down, then I think the scribe would be more helpful to you. Dr. Heverdrow opens his clipboard and begins to write. Good. Well, <clears throat> we've found a better location to house you. If you give us some information, we can speed up your transfer. I assume you already got tired of the stair room. Oh yeah, but the rest is coming with me, right? After the evaluations are done, we would like to transfer your group together. Sounds good to me. So, Doctor, what is your first question? Well, does your group have a purpose? Or rather, do you have any goals? A goal? No, I don't think so. I just like to be helpful. I don't even remember having a long-term goal. Helpful, you say? Hmm. What did you previously help with, then? We were stage props in a the theatre. You know, like background figures and stuff like that. Sometimes as clothing dolls, like normal mannequins. We were lucky enough to display sometimes for some exhibitions. I'm sorry, but we are not planning on displaying you any time soon. Then please let us take some small tasks, some requests. We'd like to feel purposeful again. I don't want to spend the rest of my days inactive without consequences or locked within walls. Let's assume we are open to your help. What could you do for us then? We can do anything associated with our skills and experience, of course. We are only having this conversation because of that. I'm the only one that can speak, remember? Yes, your ability to speak makes you a unique mannequin, but it is not an ability unique to you. How do you get these skills in the first place? When the theater lost its last funds and filed for bankruptcy, everyone took the valuable things and left, but we weren't valuable. Mannequins are difficult to rehouse too, so they left us there in the dark to collect dust. We were left there all dressed up for so long that we started our own play. It was quite entertaining, even without an audience. That is interesting. So, for the record, if you had fishing equipment on at the time, you would have become something like a fisherman, I guess. We probably also refer to that person as the fisherman, or something similar. Talk about living up to the name. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Kurinsky, please give SCP-514732 the contents from the second drawer. The guard gives SCP-514732 a pen and paper. Thanks, Kurinsky. Hmm. <clears throat> now, SCP-514732. Can you please identify each individual from your group? Of course. Give me a moment. You can use this photo. Thank you. SCP-514732 begins to write. Dr. Heverdrow sips his coffee. Do you want me to write your abilities down too? I'd just like you to name everyone for the time being. We can ask that later. Okay. Give me a moment, please. Fast forward to tape. SCP-514732 hands over the papers to Dr. Heverdwell. Ah, oh, you identify SCP-514717 as the killer. Does he have interest in these aspects? Oh no, he doesn't. But I also think you are misunderstanding something here, Doctor. And what would that be? <clears throat> Doctor, may I suggest the addition of extra measures to SCP-514717's containment before we continue. Yes, yes, of course. I also want extra surveillance. You can guard him by yourself for the time being. I'll have my leave then. Take care, Doctor. I'll make a new schedule 
and inform the team. We'll have to see what SCP-514717 is capable of later. Kronsky leaves. Another guard takes his place. So, about this misunderstanding. Yes, just because his name is associated with some horrifying things doesn't mean that we don't have morals. Also, I'd like to point out that we were figures and fitting dolls in the past, not some assassins. That makes sense, but you can't be too careful, even if it makes me a stereotypical son of a bitch. What do you do with the killer, then? Let him roam free. I know from this conversation you aren't that stupid. I don't know. You can probably make a forensic scientist from him, or let him perform autopsies. I guess instead of letting him kill, you can get him to look after the killed. Should be a piece of cake without the stress of leaving fingerprints on fragile material. Maybe a bit far-fetched, but the outcome seems interesting enough to invest in. Scribbling can be heard on the recording. Sorry for interrupting your work, but do you have any more questions for me? To be honest, I'd rather go back now if you are busy with whatever it is you're doing. Oh, excuse me. Sometimes I get too engaged with my work. I do have one more question, though. Well, Doctor, let's hear it then. So, you have morals like most humans and can give signals of an emotional attachment. No, involvement. You clearly have a mental capability. I'm glad you realized that. But, what about your physical capability? Your condition? Can you feel exhaustion? Do you have a sense of pain? I do. I can feel natural pain. But we're definitely not as fragile as normal mannequins. We don't break that easily. I think the feeling of exhaustion isn't completely present in us, but also not unknown to us. I can't really answer that part of your question. That is something we can figure out later. Can you happen to know what happens when you break? Has your group lost some members? No, we haven't lost anyone. I don't exactly know what happens when we break. I do know that we can recover from wounds just like you can. So you have some regenerative abilities. I think we need to test that later. I'm not looking forward to that, but I don't have much choice, do I? I'll try to see if there are anesthetics we could use. I'm trying to test your regeneration, not your pain limit. Thanks, I appreciate that. A speaker in the room creaks. SCP-5147-32, thank you for cooperating. Dr. Hivido, this suffices for now. Please finish the interview. You've given us some valuable information. I'll see what I can do for the upcoming transfer and the tests in the future. Perhaps I should give your request too if I ever get the chance. I'll be waiting for you when that happens, Doctor. End law. Closing statement. SCP-5147's transfer to the human containment site 63 was approved by leading staff from both locations. SCP-5147 was able to receive task requests in a testing period of two months. Due to the successful outcomes, rise in morale and staff and SCP-5147, this period was prolonged indefinitely. Dr. Hevedro did not find compatible anesthetics due to SCP-5147 not having any organ systems. Dr. Hevodro did not start researching the regenerative abilities of SCP-5147. Dr. Hevodro became permanently assigned to SCP-5147. Addendum 1. Unusual Requests Request Outcome Additional Notes 15th of July, 2013 Cook to staff's dinner. SCP-5147-3, the cook, made pumpkin soup and sandwiches for the staff. SCP-5147-3 can taste with his fingertips when needed. SCP-5147-3 makes lunch twice a week for assigned personnel. 30th of December, 2013, explain the cause of death. SCP-5147-17, the killer, now the forensic, was able to identify and prove different causes of death from 10 D-class individuals. 
SCP-5147-17 is henceforth known as the Forensic. Instances can be re if necessary. 24th of April, 2014, Replicate a House. SCP-5147-12, the Constructor, worked together with 26 D-Class individuals. D-6322 threw a brick at its head as assigned by Dr. Cholose, breaking SCP-5147-12, who recovered after three days. Dr. Cholose was afterwards unable to get his request accepted by any instances. While it's not blacklisted, he suggested relocation due to his inability to interact with SCP-5147. Research for SCP-5147's ability to regenerate was put on hold. Dr. Cholose was relocated to the analysis wing. 5th of February, 2015. Dance! Since it was shouted and not directed to a specific, to a specific instance or group, a flash mob occurred. SCP-5147 can dance very synchronized. 8th of November, 2015. Remain inactive. The requested instances refused to accept the request and went back to their inactive state. Request unsuccessful. Reason initially denied. 25th of March, 2016. Perform in ARIA. SCP-5147-32, the vocalist, performed De Quella Pura from the opera Il Trovatore. SCP-5147-32 has the vocal range of a tenure. After performing the aria a second time on request, SCP-5147-32 sounded a bit hoarse. 9th of December, 2016. None. Spontaneous. SCP-5147-5, 29, and 35, the doctor, the nurse, and the fireman helped personnel when the fire broke out. A request to let SCP-5147 interact with anomalies classified as safe was made. Request approved. 27th of June, 2018. None. Spontaneous. Dr. Roy Hubbard Rowe got a surprise party for being assigned five years to SCP-5147. SCP-5147 requested the staff's help. SCP-5147 gave Dr. Hubbard Rowe the following custom-made gifts. A watch, a wooden chess set, a barrel of craft whiskey, and a leather-bound book with their experiences with the doctor in 41 unique handwritings. As of 27th of June, 2018, no remarkable outcomes have been noted. All requests between 24th of June, 2013, initial discovery, and 26th of September, 2020 have been documented by the Foundation. Personnel with clearance level 2 can freely ask SCP-514721, the scribe, for copies.